this is a practical video uh, which will accompany the fluorescence experiment in CM3292. Um, here are Hannah, myself Simon, and some man to help deliver this. Okay, um, in your previous practicals or modules, you'll have used a UV visible heat spectrophotometer. Now, you're probably very familiar with that, where effectively you have your sample in a cuvette, a centimetre, maybe a glass cuvette. Um, it has optical windows on two sides and frosted glass on the other two. And the idea is that you shine a beam of light through that cuvette and the instrument measures how much light is absorbed. And as chemists, you are aware that the absorption is happening um, from the assemblage of bonds in molecules and the wavelength of light which is absorbed is directly proportional to the energy of those bonds. But uh, we will talk about that uh, in the lecture. This is a one step up from a, a normal um, spectrophotometer. Like a spectrophotometer, it has a cell holder, a cuvette holder. And like a spectrophotometer, it has a, um, an optical path through uh, that cell holder, the cuvette that's going to be in it. Um, and inside the compartment, you can see on the right-hand side the uh, light source. Unlike the spectrophotometer, however, this instrument at 90 degrees has a second um, optical path. Now, the cuvette you use in this practical has optical paths on all four sides. So unlike the UV vis absorption cuvette, which is frosted on both sides, this has four optical paths. And I should try to not put my dirty thumb all over them. So the way this system works is the cuvette um, is placed in the holder. And we want to close the top because we don't want stray light going in there. And from the side, the um, light is shone onto the sample. Now we'll talk in a minute about um, what wavelength, how we optimize that. But in principle, you shine light through the sample and the sample, the molecules in the sample, absorb some of that light at various wavelengths according to the assemblage of bonds. The difference here, however, is that um, in this instrument, you're making sure you're using molecules which not only absorb that energy, but either with or without uh, an electronic rearrangement, they then emit that energy back out again. Um, now, that emission happens at 90 degrees to the exciting radiation, um, which is coming in across the cuvette. So, um, this is then somewhat different because you are measuring, you're interested in that emitted radiation. Um, there are a couple of different classifications of those emissions. Um, if the energy is absorbed and then emitted quite promptly, that's termed fluorescence. And if the energy is absorbed, and then there are rearrangements, and then it's emitted uh, sometime later, that's called phosphorescence. Um, in terms of a general diagnostic, if you have um, fluorescence, which is um, happening as the sample is being irradiated, if you turn the excitation radiation off, turn the um, uh, turn that off, and actually the emitted radiation, if it's fluorescence, also ceases. If, on the other hand, you have a, 
uh, phosphorescent system, when you turn the exciting radiation off, actually the emission will continue. Uh, but that's uh, that a second thing. Okay, that's how this works. I'll now hand over to Hannah, who will go through the first part of the practical we did. Okay, so now we're ready to use the fluorescent machine. We need to make sure it's turned on at the side here. Um, you can see the switch here, not all zero. You just pop that on. It will take a couple of minutes to warm up. Um, it's a xenon lamp and it will take maybe 10 to 15 minutes. So if you are the first group and you just, you've just turned it on, give it a little while to warm up, go and prepare your samples or whatever it else is you need to do. Um, yeah, so the software is here. Now we'll go and um, put our samples in the cover. What are fluorescent spectrometer running? Um, like Dr. Watts said, we're using a curvette which is clear on all four sides um, because the light's going to come out at 90 degree angle. And you can see that there. This one's a little bit wet and messy. It might be worth just washing the curvette with DI water before you put your sample in just to make sure that you've got rid of any dust or any uh, remnants that were in there from the last sample. Okay, so we've got a sample here. Um, you guys will obviously be pouring out from your volumetric flasks. Um, it's probably worth just washing uh, the curvette once with your sample just to make sure that it's um, flushed out everything that was previously in. Fill up your uh, curvette to just above the top, and then oops, place the cap on the top. And you want to just wipe down the sides just to make sure that there's no water or drips around it. Once you've wiped it, try and hold the curvette just on its corners, like that, so you're not touching the sides which the light's going to be passing through. Okay. So this goes into our machine. It doesn't matter which way you put it in because obviously it's the same on all sides. Place your sample in there and close the lid. Now during your practical, you will actually have all the information you need to um, carry out the experiment here in the lab manual. We're not going to go through that today because it's pretty simple and all you need to do is follow the instructions. Um, we'll just run here um, the um, emission spectrum. So from here, go on to uh, acquire mode spectrum. This is all your parameters here. So we're doing the emission spectrum. We'll start at a wavelength of um, 300. Which is consistent with your yeah. guidance here. And um, do an ending one at 600. And that's the same as you would do for, the, uh, for your first sample um, in your practical. Um, you want to change this to fast. Super. <laughs> Super. <laughs> Super. Um, and we want this on low. Obviously, these parameters will change um, throughout the practical. You'll need to take the excitation spectrum at some point, as well as the emission spectrum. Um, but for this one, we're just going to run this. So it's going to scan from a wavelength of 300 nanometers to 600 nanometers. Um, the purpose of doing this uh, initially running the emission spectrum is to find at what point our fluorescing um, molecule is actually emitting. So we can narrow down the wavelength and essentially save time and increase the absorption and the intensity of our peaks when we're actually running the sample. And we'll do the parallel uh, part in, uh, on the um, excitation wavelength uh, spectrum. So this is looking at the emission 
the next part would look at the excitation and in the same way narrow it down to the most important wavelength to excite the molecule with. Once we've set all our parameters, all we need to do is click the uh, traffic light sign, start, and our machine will start scanning. And you'll hear the click and the... Uh, yeah. Just remember not to open the box when scanning. It's pretty um, intuition, you know? Intuitive. <laughs> Intuitive. <laughs> The scan is over quite quickly. So in here you'll enter your fine file name. Um, I'll just put the date today. And save. Uh, it doesn't like slashes. Make it one number. Slashing. It's so gory. <laughs> <laughs> By the shark. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of editing on this. Uh, oh. um, well, that's the first stage, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, now we've got our emission spectrum. We need to run the um, excitation spectrum to find between what values that um, our compound is going to be for resting. Um, and that's all described. Yeah. in here so I think probably mm -hmm. because you literally have the menus and the settings in these instructions rather than us walk through it uh, we're here to show you about the equipment rather than the actual practical um, I think probably we should say goodbye yeah okay thank you very much indeed goodbye <laughs>